Duck face, I got you uh, some breakers laid out for you. So this just says dual function. CFA, ground fault, right? C-A-F-I and G-F-I, G-F-C-I. This is 15 amps. So if your friend has um, uh, the uh, Rome, uh, knob and tube, aluminum wiring to, his, to the receptacle, even if they had 20 amps on it, I recommend you downgrade to here. This will uh, keep you under the limits of that tw of aluminum um, knob and tubing um, overheating. This will be give you protection. Yes, you're going to lose five amps of power, but you're going to be have a much safer system. So if you got it on 20, drop to 15. You're, you're going to get less stress on that system. It's an older system. You got to remember knob and tube and stuff like that, and and not stuff like that and knob and tubing. So there you go. You just have to add more circuits if you need more. Uh, a, a dedicated line like a, a air conditioning unit for example you can give it a dedicated new, new line 15 amp oh i mean 20 amp the break this break right here is it says combination arc fault circuit so this is arc fault and then the one to the left is a um, different company why do i have it out here because i want you to understand this the, the square d this is 20 amp this is gfi gfic so this will protect your kitchens, all right? This is not the arc fault one. This is a GFIC for the whole entire line, the entire circuit. This it will protect, protect the entire circuit on the GFIC and arc fault. So this this is the superior one over this one. This does one service. But if you're in a garage, for example, this is work in a garage where you're protecting the GFIC part, you know, stepping in water, things like that. This works in there, basements. And where you might also have some arcing that's typical, like starting a, um, it might be interpreted as arcing, like saws or a small 110 weld or something like that. Hey, George, that's not cool at all, dude. He just put the nails inside my shoulder because you know, he wants his lovies. So hold on, George. He wakes up sometimes like I have a nightmare and he comes running to me. And I guess and when if, I, if I ignore him for just, you know, it was about seven seconds when I knew he jumped behind me. I got the nails on my shoulder. He breaks out his nails. Not cool, George. Not not cool, Georgie. Not cool. It's okay. So you want to stay with the same brand, all right? You want to stay with the same brand. And if it's a rental property, don't the electrician, electrician should be doing it. Homeowners, most of most states allow homeowners to change their own electrical stuff. Yeah. And you can probably go online and find videos of installing installing this but just stay with the brand and i don't care if it does fit the panel stay with the brand because if the fire starts and the fire marshal or the insurance company says you got two different brands here and you put it on there you might be in the person could get in trouble so yes yeah, stay with the brand these are about 45 50 dollars each now um and again down downsizing is better and then have them change the receptacles out if they're old receptacles you, and, and you put a for example you push your Two prong, two, two prong, not three. That third prong, that ground leg, it grabs better, right? So don't use that. Use a two prong to test your receptacles. There is a real load that it's a weight limit that uh, pull out test you use. Um, I have it in a longer video. I never posted it for you. Um, it was for Donna Bell. Asked that question about that. And I did Donna Bell. I showed her the video, the one, the video with the uh, one minute skit on the um the receptacles and how they have that why that tab the so put the two prong in there pull it push it in and if it pulls out real easy like with the two prong or you think the receptacle's old um but when you when you pull on it and it or well, the receptacle is old if it's 40 years old just change the receptacle all right you can be fancy and upgrade to a receptacle like this it uses a usb charger i still gotta put the metal plate on that one and here's the Donabel video. If you can see through, and once you see through my finger here, you can see through. And see that gap there? The huge ass gap. Watch my finger close it. Okay. That's because these old plugs use one side to grip. And there's the, the nodule. The, she asked me about why the holes in the plugs. Well, the older receptacles had this little nodule, this little knob that would grab. And what I did to the one to the closest to us, this one, as I pushed it back over, or you can you can see one here, and so left finger, left this finger here, you can see it going in and out of that spot there. 
Don't count the middle, all right? I'll block that. Count that spot right there. But look to the right. You can't see it, so a plug will grip there really nice. But on this side, it grips shitty. People used to bend their plugs, and they would bend them in to get grip. Well, in is no good. you got to bend it out for it to touch this. Um, if you're trying to, so you would open the legs of the, uh, the blades, they call them. You would open them up. Now, the new receptacles, new receptacles have not just this one it's rubbing against, but it's two. So it slides in between my fingers. Your blade slides in between two of these. So that it gives you a little more um, clamp force and protection against this heating and, and restrict con contracting. You know, heat contract uh, um, creates expansion, but in this case, this heat also created um, the heat... The heat uh, bent this metal, fatigued it in. Now, this is probably 60, 70, 80 years old, this one. Now, this one, again, I bent it out. I bent this leg out right here. So, I bent it out to, sh to, sh to show you that it could work. Or sh get it. Well, you're seeing it now. This is just to show people how this works, specifically an electrician that has a guy in training. I work under an electrician's license. But I try to show the uh, young, young, young ones how, how this is. Now, I'm never going to get my electrical license as far as I can care less. Um, I've got quite a few electricians that I work under their license. So in other words, when I do things, it is under their license, and they come out and they, they do the inspections and get the permits and, sign, and it gets signed off on by an, an inspector, a private inspector. Our municipalities around where I am, they do not do the inspections for the most part. They rely on third parties. As you can see over here, it's you can see daylight through both of them, the bottom one and the top one. Remember, these are this the electric is connected here and here, neutral and ground. So this would be the hot rather, and this would be the neutral leg coming back. Well, see it's the blades connected, so you don't have to you only have to connect the one screw. You can even connect opposite, it doesn't matter as long as it's going to be connected. It's going to connect the top and the bottom for two two prong two-prong plug, if you will. There's no ground leg on theirs. And that's going to get you a circuit. Now, an arc fault protector will, will catch on if that loose receptacle, that loose plug is over here, like I showed you in the previous um, video where you asked me about. The if it, if, it, if it sees that arcing, it will, let's get a little computer inside, that little breaker I showed you, why it's 50 bucks, and it will say, hmm, uh, kick out, and it will break, out, break the breaker off, and you, it's up to you to find the short. Basically, unplug everything on that line, turn it back on. If it's still short, you know you're probably going to find it in uh, um, the plug. When you go to plug it in, you'll probably see burnt plug, like something loose like that. And you can probably smell it even. Sometimes you can smell something that's a little funky. Sniffing the, sniff the plug. Sniff the plugs, man. <laughs> Snort them. All right, so... Um, the uh, the larger prong and smaller prong, and so the neutral on some of this stuff is, um, even though it's AC, DC, some current, some machinery can run backwards, and this just protects that from running backwards, DC, or the wrong side of the, the motor, if you will, run backwards. Wrong side of the motor is what I'm, I'm thinking of. Um, and so this is why the prongs are different sizes. You can run some equipment backwards, AC, uh, DC, uh, AC current. You can run some equipment backwards. I've got quite a few pieces of equipment that can run backwards on AC. Just turn it in reverse and run it backwards. If you guys think about your drills, electric drills and all that, they don't make saws run backwards. Uh, well, they make a lathe that runs backwards. They make a lot of tools that runs. you can change directions. Um, and that's polarity, polarity. And that's a very interesting concept because if you think about it, how did I turn it and run it backwards? That's a Colombo question. Electric comes in on the hot side, comes back on the neutral, right? How do I make it run backwards? Am I now running electric from the neutral and coming back on the hot? Did I just reverse it that way? The answer is no, but can you tell me why? Why? All right, that's fun for any electricians out there to, 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 uh, to tell you that. No, I did not. Reverse the electric where it's running backwards, coming in on neutral and going out on, on the hot. That's not what's happening. So can anyone tell me why? All right. Um, 
It's a reversible motor. It's a reversible motor is your answer. The motor's reversible, not the electric. Not the electric, the motor. All right. Hopefully I didn't confuse you on that. Take care. Hopefully it helps. Remember, stay with the brand. Change out the receptacles. Um, see how the wiring is in there. If it's shit wiring, you might have to just replace it, bail on it. Um, send me some photographs if you want. I'll tell you my opinion on it. I can do another video showing how I how I metal fatigue it. I, I bend the uh, knob and tube. And if it fractures, then it, it's shit. It needs to be replaced. But if it's still flexible and pliable, that, 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 that coating. And that coating has a name. Oh, shit. A knob and tube. I know it. It's a weird name. It's sort of like saying murder with a flock of birds, crows. You call them murder. Well, this, this coating on the knob and tube has a weird name, too. If anyone looks it up, put it in the comments. I'm not trolling. I just, no, mode, mood, mode, ah, shit. Some weird name. I think it begins with an M. Uh, more. It's, it's weird. There's a few coatings, but the one I'm talking about is that weird one that you'll find if you look it up. All right. Take care, guys. Love you. And, um, this goes out to um, Pugface Media. If you care to watch his, go to his channel, he has pugs on there, his animals, and they take them on walks, and people love him, and he does, he's, he's an attorney, so... Be careful what you say. He'll sue you for everything you say. Of course not. Of course not. Pug's got a good sense of humor. And um, he's a good channel member. Take care.